Hello, welcome to Recapping with Delora and Ashley. Please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Recapping Podcast. Also, comment, rate, and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. We're on all the things. We would love to hear your ratings of the movies and shows we review. Email us your audio file to recappingpodcast at gmail.com and we will play it during the show. Or DM us on Instagram and we will post and read it on air. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you. Ashley, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you today? Ashley, I'm excited because this is our 49th episode. I like, know. What? I know. Can you believe we are almost to magical number 50? Oh my goodness. I'm sure we'll, you know, elaborate more during that episode, but just super excited. I got some feedback, by the way, on our request of what should we name our listeners. I have someone who, who said they want to be called the Recaptains. So that's another one to add to the list. Recaptains out there. So Recaptains. keep giving us your feedback, guys. Recap Nation is really the one that's sticking in my heart. <laughs> but Recaptains right. will accept. So keep them coming. To be fair, Recap Nation and Recappers are kind of, you know, even in my heart right now. Okay. <laughs> I could go either way at this point, <laughs> but thank you for the suggestion. So I'm excited for this week's quick headlines and hot topics, Ashley, because so much went on this weekend. Yes. Okay? Starting on Friday, Chloe, we know her best from the duo, Chloe and Hallie, she dropped her single and music video for Have Mercy. Mm -hmm. This is all gearing up to the VMAs, which we'll get there in a minute. Ashley, for this music video in particular, it's Chloe wearing a lot of pink, sororities theme, uh, cute fraternity brothers, um, and a little bit of Greek mythology with Medusa. Right, right, right. Chloe turns the boys into stone, in particular, Roman Flynn, uh, who's the hottie from How to Get Away with Murder. So Ashley, need to know, what were your initial thoughts on the song, and how do you feel about this music video? I definitely enjoyed the Medusa angle. I thought that was different, because I didn't understand mm-hmm. when I was just seeing some of her artwork leading up to her photography, leading up to it, what the hairstyle yeah. choice was. So yeah. that made a lot of sense. I also love the cameo from Mama Tina, of course, because this, yeah. this is very much Beyonce inspired for me. You know what I mean? It's not uh, groundbreaking artistically, personally for me, but mm-hmm. for her first solo endeavor, I really enjoyed it. I remember it was giving me like check on it vibes with the pink mm-hmm. and some of the aesthetic choices. But again, I think the song is a bop. It's stuck in my head. I enjoyed it very much. And I enjoy seeing Chloe, who we both have said is a star, just like her Absolutely. sister Hallie, kind of mm-hmm. move forward in this direction. So what'd you think? So I'm not gonna lie, wasn't a fan of any crotch grabbing just because I'm like (laughs) you're beautiful enough you're sexy enough because like I love a good sexy moment you know what I mean like like all of her looks were super cute I think my favorite would be the one with the black dress and the headpiece and then there was the other moment out in the garden headpiece red dress and then her dance break actually in the garden reminded me of Deja Vu with Beyonce's dance break, you know, but you can see the, she wants it. You can see the intensity. You can see, <laughs> you know, the She's drive. She's hungry. So when we spoke She's to Drake at the hungry. beginning of his career, you see that hunger that those yes. new artists have, even though she'd been in the game for a little bit. This is that yes. step out that Justin Timberlake, can't nobody love you like I love you <laughs> moment. <laughs> But as you said, it is a bob. I I do think she has the range vocally as well as the musical depth to do more. You can tell that she just is trying to garner the audience at this point. Yeah. <laughs> and we know this from her music with her sister as well. You know what I mean? So 
I'm excited. And I saw an interview on MTV where she talked about how she wanted to empower women and women can talk about their bodies because men talk about it all the time, you know. Indeed. Talking about that ass. Okay, <laughs> so let's go to our next quick headline. The NTV VMAs. Ashley, this award show has been around for 40 years. Okay. And they tried to make this special. <laughs> did you watch of course I watched I am a loyal steel award show watcher so MTV VMA mm -hmm. still falls in that category I call every performance except for the very end because I feel like Busta mm -hmm. Rhymes is kind of where I was like okay I'm done <laughs> ah. so I miss Travis <laughs> and MGK but uh-huh uh-huh I know well, I know I what the girls said you know I, I know what I know what happened to introduce so that's all I needed <laughs> Well, Ashley, I'm not going to lie. The Amaze have, has fallen off my list of award shows I actually watch on any type of regularity because I'm not going to lie. You know, I'm not saying we're aging out, but I don't know who some of these people are. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> when I was watching the pre-show, I literally text my best friend and said, I'm too old for this because I don't know neither the host nor the the talent now. But then yeah. they rolled on to some people I did know. So I was like, oh, okay, well, maybe we're doing like a mixture between old and new, which That's was kind of the theme of the night, if you think about mm -hmm. it. It was kind of like a yes. celebration of the artists that we have known for years and years, as well as kind of mm -hmm. the new school kids. So I appreciated that because the old head, like we, you're right, we're becoming old heads to Laura. <laughs> Where are my younger generation to keep me here? Hip is how I be feeling. Oh, Ashley, Ashley, let me tell you. And honestly, that would be one of the things that I felt like this award, uh, this particular award show was missing. I mean, they had Madonna introduce it in a very big way. <laughs> in a um, very Madonna way. <laughs> in a very Madonna way. I was not expecting what we saw when she walked away. Was not expecting that. I wasn't either, but can I be honest? I've yes. heard and seen some hate on the whole Madonna showing her ass. If people are still talking about my ass at 63, I'm winning. That's all I have to say. I am winning. Work or no work, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> if them cheeks are a trending topic the next day, yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. But what I was uh, trying to allude at, there wasn't enough OGs. There were no Janet, obviously, no Beyonce, no Kanye. Like, where, where's the transition? You know what I mean? To speak of, like, you Has know, Kanye been back to the VMA since the infamous incident. Did he come back no. the year? Taylor Swift a couple wasn't years there. after I mean, she was nominated, but she wasn't going to win because I mean we all know this is a popularity contest. But even Ariana wasn't there, and she's part of yeah. you know the established artists. But yeah. let's get to the best part. Let's talk about these performances. There were quite a few performers because uh, again I'm not really going to go down the winners because I don't think they matter. I mean, okay, I'll <laughs> tell you video video of the year. One by my favorite internet troll, Little Nas X. <laughs> he won from Montero, okay. But um, as far as um, performances go, who's your fave? Or did you have multiple favorites? Yeah, I had um, three listed and plus honorable mention. And this is in order. Uh, Normani absolutely was my favorite performance of the night. That Janet Jackson moment with Tiana Taylor just mm -hmm. shook it me. I was not absolutely. ready. Chloe was number two um, with her debut performance with Have Mercy. Her dance break on her live performance especially got me. The licking of the mic. Woo! Jesus, girl, putting it out there for the people. That. I but didn't love that. We're because we're because we're heterosexual females, but she's putting it out there for the people. Because <laughs> I guarantee you that some men came away from that performance very satisfied. And then number three for me is Doja Cat. I I had never seen her kind of do the aerial moment, and for her to come out and still hit the choreo and all of that, I thought was great. Honorable mention for me is Ed Sheeran, just because it had been so long since I had seen him on stage, and, and he I love really good too. He does. He's he looked like better. He's, he looks like the baby and family life is treating him very well. He's looking yes. spelt. Um, well, he's, and it was, 
sleeping in a, a, a stable bed and eating, you know, three, <laughs> three, three meals solid a day. meals a day. Yeah, it was just so nice to see him perform. And I love Ed Sheeran's voice. It's just so soothing to me. So I enjoyed those top performances. What about you? So Ashley, to the point I was making earlier with the MTV Awards, it had fallen off my my awards list, but when I heard of the, the gals performing, I was like, I have to watch. So the gals I'm talking about were Normani, Doja Cat, and Chloe. So, <laughs> we had the same top three. My honorable mention would be uh, Little Nas X because the choreography for uh, Sean Bankhead so he choreographed two performances that night and they had large ensembles of dancers. Oh, We're yeah. talking Montero as well as Normani's Wild Side. And my favorite being Normani. Oh, so I knew she was going to kill it with the dance, but I was so happy that her vocals were together. I will say, I guess I did watch the last VMAs when she premiered Motivation. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, motivation made such a splash with the music video, but the live performance, you know, left some to be desired when it came to the actual vocals of it all. And I don't know why she was not originally on the list to perform. Right. Uh, well, but we MTV about that. did not have her on the list. And it actually took Lord dropping out for her to get that spot. So for her to come through with that performance with like least amount of time impressive impressive I'm, she is professional <laughs> I'm definitely impressed by every performance I've seen her do thus far and I'm sorry I, I said uh she reminded me of had the Janet moment she also reminded me of a uh, TLC with the outfit a bit uh with the silver mm -hmm. kind of remind me of no scrubs mm -hmm. so yeah love and it. I also feel uh Sierra vibes as well oh it's always so, some Sierra vibes in there always and when it came to Chloe so excited, but I'm not going to lie, Ashley. It was a lot. It was a lot. I was <laughs> like, I need a little bit more nuance from her. And to be fair, this is her first solo performance. It was on a very big stage. She vocally was killing it. Mm -hmm. The dancing was good. So I'm going to say this, okay? It was just in February, she was crying about people talking about her being in her panties on Instagram, right? And then how many months now? <laughs> I don't want to say that that was disingenuous, but I don't think that that was good, a good move for her to make because if you're going to embrace your sexuality then embrace yes. your sexuality you don't apologize Period. for it and make it something yes. like you don't understand because then it comes across as very disingenuous because you are a young woman you want to embrace this you want to embrace your body then embrace your body baby yes and I you know I'm here for it because she's au natural so I'm loving it literally she is oh but Hallie uh, though to introduce her Hallie was looking love that dress first of all this is Hallie's weekend for dressing okay yes because she is on my fire. list for the Met Gala stories mine too so the last thing I'm going to say about Chloe and then we'll go to our final quick headline I'm excited she got this out of the way I look forward to her further development because again it was it was a lot it was a lot and I, I can't say <laughs> I was like, yes, the whole time, because I'm just like, okay, so I know with the Medusa, you know, inspiration from the video, I see you doing it on stage. I see the background with Chloe and it looks like it's Halloween thriller situation. Like, was she supposed to be, you know, screaming out of anger, rage? I don't know. It was a lot. So I look forward she's to just announcing her presence, Dolores. She's <laughs> saying, I'm here. I have arrived. But again, I think, I think it's, it's very much to me in the wheelhouse of she's still needing to find herself artistically as a solo <laughs> artist. She's embracing inspiration from all these other people who have come before her, but we need to figure out who Chloe is. Well said, Ashley. Into our final quick headline. 
Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck return to the red carpet together. This happened in Venice, the Venice Film Festival. Ben Affleck was promoting his new film called The Last Duel. And we know they've been together. They've been spotted by the paparazzi all this time. She even put them on the gram officially for her birthday. But this is the first time they're making their red carpet debut. Do you have any thoughts, Ashley? J-Lo looked amazing, as always. They looked great together. But I have to be honest, it's not some big, oh my God, this is your big debut. Because to your point, I've seen them so much. I'm honestly a thousand percent. If I'm uh-huh. a thousand percent, I'm tired of them already. Keep like, them, Keep it real. Keep it coming. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm at the point where it's like, I thought that hopefully the purpose of y'all getting together now later in life is that maybe y'all are going to learn from the mistakes of the past. And one of the mistakes that it seems like y'all relationship may have had was way too much exposure and overexposure. So I really don't want them to feed into this media hype because man, just be happy and go live y'all lives. Like I know JLo is always going to be a superstar. I know Ben Affleck is always going to be an actor. I know that them together is always going to be a big deal, but I'm saying like, don't fall into the trap again of becoming such a t- talked about couple and such a highly sought after photograph couple that it takes away from this rekindling of y'all relationship. That's just how I feel about it. That's very valid, Ashley. For me, I'm not going to lie. I was kind of like screaming like, oh my goodness, <laughs> Jennifer 2.0 have made their red carpet debut. I was, um, I knew it was going to happen. I just didn't know when, you know what I mean? And at first I thought it was going to happen at the Met, but um, according to one of our favorite shows, Daily Pop, she apparently introduced her last boo, Alex, (laughs) during a Met gala appearance. And so I think this was great. It was overseas. Ultimately, it was overshadowed by all the other activities. (laughs) going on in New York so they made their splash and then it moved on so in some ways I thought that was smart but we'll we'll get to this a little bit more later she showed up at the Met Gala the the carpet by herself Mm -hmm. but there's pictures of them kissing in masks and I'm just like y'all are doing too much with this okay like y'all are in your 50s <laughs> like, I, I appreciate the, the new and exciting love of it all but it's like that was unnecessary so all right well I I hope this is in game for them that's all I have to say to that me too y'all got your kids you've had you've made your mistakes yes. let's ride off into the sunset on a yacht somewhere with a uh, you know Ben rubbing on her booty because you know he loves rubbing that little booty. He All right, loves doing that. I shouldn't say little. He loves rubbing on that booty. <laughs> Girl, sometimes I forget J Lo was one of the first because when you look at all the other iterations since her, they it looks small in comparison. Well, you know <laughs> now we got doctors involved, so we had another level with this movement. All right, Ashley, time for hot topics. I don't. I don't, I really don't want to talk about this, but we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Looking at Yahoo News, okay? Nicki Minaj slams Joy Reid after on-air call-out over COVID vaccine tweets. Ashley, Nicki Minaj had the bright idea to tell I don't even know how many followers she has on Twitter let me check 22 million 22 million followers honestly her fans were asking the barbs were asking where were you she wasn't at the VMAs and she wasn't at the Met to be honest for the VMAs somebody was really shady on Twitter and was like it's because it's so many miles away from Chuck E. Cheese very shady (laughs) Because for those who do not know, Nicki Minaj married a man who has Mm -hmm. been charged as being a sexual predator. So I'm sure there's a long story to it, but it's just not a good look. It's not a good look and nobody wants her with him, but that I digress. 
She seems happy. Yes, yeah, so. so and they have a very cute baby together. So the barbs are asking, where are you? So she pretty much said that she had caught COVID. And she also, whoa, well, I'm sorry. She first stated that one of, her, one of the requirements for the Met Gala was to be vaccinated and she didn't like that. And then she pre- proceeded to go on talking about, you know, figuring things out, doing her own research. And then this is where things got hella sticky, Ashley. She decided to tell this, <laughs> the good old, my cousin's friend, my uncle's wife's sister story that's, that went a little bit like this, Ashley. My cousin in Trinidad won't get vaccine because his friend got it and became impotent. His testicles became swollen. His friend was weeks away from getting married. Now the girl called off the wedding. So just pray on it and make sure you're comfortable with your decision, not bullied. So Joy Reid, like so many people, (laughs) was like, what are you doing? You have 22.6 million followers. This is reckless. Um, What else did Joy say? She pretty much said that like somebody's auntie because she is also an island girl. And Nikki Minaj proceeds to call Joy a bunch of names. You know, the barbs are putting unicorns in people's mentions. (laughs) Ashley, I have to know what were your initial thoughts when this, you know, ish hit the fan? I'm absolutely team joy on this one. The fact that the health minister from Trinidad and Tobago had to have that whole press conference to address this story because Nikki decided to put this on social media about swollen testicles was just completely ludicrous to me. Celebrities know the power of their platforms. There's already so much misinformation, hesitancy, contempt from some people regarding the vaccine. We just did not need this. Um, Obviously, Nikki's entitled to say what she wants to say, her free speech, but I agree with Joy that it was disappointing because that's the main sentiment that Joy had was that this was disappointing to see someone who has such a large audience put forth information like this because it's irresponsible like saying that you're doing your research that's one thing but when you start you know talking about my cousin Skeeter's friend boo boo and them got swollen testicles and became impotent you know then that's hearsay and you're putting out things that you know haven't even been verified and you have such a large following of people who may run with that type of idea so um, I'm team joy and unfortunately for me you know this not unfortunately for me, I was a Nicki Minaj fan, still somewhat am a Nicki Minaj fan, but I guess it does not help her reputation for me in any way for her to be a part of something like this. I'll say that. What about you, Delora? Well, thank you, Ashley, for talking about the fallout. Yes, so many officials, medical officials had to come out and pretty much say none of this is true. You know, every... (laughs) Like you mentioned, in Trinidad, Dr. Fauci has been asked about this. So many medical professionals have been asked about, you know, these claims of swollen testicles and impotency. And it's just disappointing. I'm not going to lie. Nicki Minaj's decision-making leaves much to be desired. You know what I mean? And this is why rappers aren't the voice of our community. You know, they simply are not. And I agree with you. I Now, Nikki never said that she was never going to get vaccinated. She just said that she's doing her research. But what research? Like, this is the part where I really, it really grinds my gears, you know, family guy reference. It's like, are you really talking to your doctor or anybody in the medical community about this? Someone that you can trust? Because I don't really think this quote-unquote research is real research. I think it's YouTube videos and hearsay on the internet. 
And that's not good enough. Especially at the height of wealth and fame where you have access to the highest quality of medical care possible. Um, Just doesn't make any type of sense. Like I have fortunately been able to have conversations with doctors that I trust and I'm not Nicki Minaj. So, and again, we're how far into uh, the pandemic with, you know, vaccines being available that you're saying you're still doing your research. So at what point is it going to be, okay, is it five years before you feel comfortable with whatever research is out there? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So to your point, the time frame is questionable too, because how much longer do you need in terms of there being information available to you? But at the same time, you saying that is one thing to me, it just took it, you took it to another level when you start talking and putting out, um, you know, scare type of stories to make people who are already probably on the fence less likely to want to move forward and get the vaccine. They probably saw them was like, see, I told y'all, yeah. see, you yep. know what I mean? And we and we know this because we know these people. We have these conversations yes. Yes. with exactly. our family members, friends, whoever, who it exactly. only takes one thing for them to be like, yes. oh, no, oh, no, not for me. Exactly. Exactly. I'm so glad that you said that, Ashley, because I was just about to say, these type of stories you tell one-on-one, you don't put it out for the entire world to read. And again, the fact that she is being used in the news, especially on Fox News, I don't know. I just would feel some kind of way, but I'm going to be a little shady. I feel like this is helping the news cycle in her name because before it was not looking good. It dealt a lot about what was going on with her husband and uh, threats of intimidation of the woman who made the claim that got him in trouble in the first place. But it's also not a good look for the way that she spoke about joy. Like it's one thing to say, oh, you should not be, but to call her a coon, call, you know, bring up supposedly some homophobic uh, things that were not true. Like you're not, the way that she attacked her was not a good look either. It was so childish. It was so childish. I'm like, because Joy never really? called you out of your name. Period. All she did was say she was disappointed. So if you take that and you ran with that and felt the need to yes. blow it up to that extent, yep. that really says a, more, a lot more about you about than it does you. about Joy. Thank you, Ashley. That's an excellent point. Uh, caveat, Joy Reid has been attached to homophobic um, writings in the past, but she has since mul- uh, apologized multiple times. So, you know... I don't think she would have had her job if she wasn't forgiven, but I will say exactly. It just seems very childish. And Nikki, you're knocking on 40. This ain't cute. This ain't cute anymore. Stop playing these games. <laughs> Does not help Goodness. the reputation. I thought Joy said that her uh, account had been hacked during times that yeah. certain things came out. So I was a little muddled. That was a little muddy for me. It's very muddled because she says that she was hacked, but then the investigation was done. And then they said that, they didn't see that but I'm not really trying to put my my sis joy on the bus by any means but <laughs> yeah so that's all I have to say about that because honestly it was just infuriating to see her behavior and oh since then update she has been blocked on Twitter she's in Twitter jail <laughs> she went on her Instagram live talking about she thinks something's going on another conspiracy about the man and keeping you know, people's words, you know, tamed and what, whatever. All right, whatever. sis. All right. I'm not going to be one of those people who hops on, I'm not going to be one of those people who hops on your social and says team party, but I'm just saying it's not helping your reputation. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm saying. That was petty. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Ashley, let's go ahead and go into our second hot topic the met gala okay the first monday in may happened on some monday in september (laughs) (laughs) what what, which monday is this i don't know this was the 13th monday was the 13th (laughs) (laughs) so the anticipated met gala happened on monday and the stars came out. This year's Met Gala was celebrating in America, a lexicon of fashion at the Metropolitan Museum of Arts in New York City. 
what the hell that thing means, no one really knows. <laughs> and it was evident on that red carpet, Ashley. Indeed. I'm just going to go ahead and go through the topics I want to talk about in particular, okay? So I want to hear about your favorites, your mm-hmm. disappointments, and possibly surprises. And I actually am going to throw out one more. It's called uh, close call. So somebody who was maybe on the cusp. Oh yeah, of and I getting it. I do have those too. I, I called them honorable mentions, so I do have those. Yes. I okay. feel like this year, to be honest with you, was one of the best years in terms of me having a solid best dress list. Because girl, Same. I have a list. Yeah, I, girl, um, me too. Me too. Seriously. I was like Ashley. Actually, we're going to be going through all their mom. No, seriously. <laughs> there was some there was some stunners this year. But let me say first, shout out to Vogue for the live stream. Because I watched that whole entire with live Kiki? stream. Yes, with Kiki and Alana Glazer from 5.30 to 9 p.m. I was glued. I had to order me a pizza because I was like, listen, I'm not about to be able to make it out and get no dinner because this is no. going on forever. <laughs> I love that. I actually was watching E! e News with Karamo and yep. Nina Parker. So yeah, very yeah. nice. But shout out to Vogue. I appreciate y'all. And Kiki, you are a consummate entertainer. Consummate. Star. Love you. Star. So and it's almost like she's been here before in some ways. Yeah. Like, she balances the youth and then like, you know, older people love her too. You know what I mean? And everybody in between. That's such a good point that you make about her because she's so in tune, like, especially with social media and doing all the funny videos and all this stuff to appeal to the youth. But she definitely has that maturity level that, you know, she's always retained. So in no particular order, my best dress list does start with Kiki Palmer and that Sergio Hudson, Diana Ross inspo dress. Mm-hmm. I loved it. The gold was beautiful. The hair was beautiful loved it uh my second is amanda gorman in that electric blue vera wang dress she was beautiful loved it stunning yara shahidi in dior that josephine baker inspo when she hopped up had the veil going had the dress popping oh my god Mm -hmm. i was in love yara is probably at the tip top of my best dress list Kate okay. Hudson, Kate Hudson in that pink Michael Kors with the Lorraine Schwartz diamonds. Kate has been killing it, by the way. Gagging. Did you see her yeah. at uh, some of the film festivals? Those, her, the body yaddy yaddy. When I, I tell you, say. Kate Hudson is usually on my best dress list. Again, as I said, we did our He's All That recap. My dress for prom yes. was inspired by <laughs> that yellow dress from How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. She has always been an inspiration for me. I love Kay Hudson. Um, your girl Normani in that yellow Valentino, Valentino. Couture, she was gorgeous. Yep. And did it have pockets? Because you know, I love a dress I know. with a pocket. But her, her jewelry and that color on her skin, it was just perfect. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, Regina King in that pinstripe dress and coat from Michael Kors. Michael Kors did his thing at this Met Gala for me. Allison Felix in that white Fendi Couture flowing beautiful dress. Loved it so much. Was not ready. For Allison to step out like that. Billie Eilish in her big debut as a fashionista in Oscar de la Renta. Now, the makeup for me, Delora, was a bit overdone. Because I think for me, that was typical Billy, though. Like, you know, when she has a softer makeup look, like when she just Mm -hmm. did her um, performance that she did in L.A. that's on Disney Mm -hmm. Plus, the makeup Mm -hmm. was perfection because I think she has such a beautiful face that Mm -hmm. when I see her with too much makeup on, she looks overdone. She, I I love her looking natural. She's showing body yaddy yaddy too. She like come through leg. She looked amazing. Like it was like. Yeah, Go ahead. amazing. When she no, had I her, it. when she had her interview talking about this, because you know, usually Billie mm-hmm. Eilish is dressed from head to toe, and you can't really see skin or anything. Yeah. The way I used to dress in high school, according what to my she, dad. So yes, <laughs> what she said was is that she felt like it was time. Like the reason why she's always dressed covered up is because she felt insecure about her body mm-hmm. she just mm-hmm. wasn't comfortable so she felt this is time this is her big reveal and her big coming out so Delora this was her prom moment the way you have <laughs> you stepped out 
<laughs> in that black silk number, this was Billie Eilish. She just did it in Oscar de la Renta at the Met Gala. And she only does it for Vogue, though, because you remember her British Vogue cover. She she gave us Stepped the it first out. glimpse of like, look at me, I'm a young woman. Because so Vogue, I love Vogue it. brings it out of us, okay? Yeah. Um, yeah. Venus Williams in the red probable Garan, that old Hollywood glamour. The oh, she never looked better. The hair, everything was on Every, point for me. And she, you could tell she felt good about her look. Yeah, too. like there and it was, was a like collaboration. This, it was a collaborative yeah. effort that she had with the designer because I forgot she designed as well. She was like, as a designer, mm-hmm. I wanted someone who I felt comfortable with. We had this whole vision of taking it back to like '30s, '40s Hollywood, and just incorporating that into the look. 100 percent nailed it in my opinion um emily blunt and that moo moo angelic from head to toe mm-hmm. crystal I effortlessly loved it this was like this is what her character from the devil wears prada in my opinion well you know she felt worn. the pressure she felt the pressure she couldn't show up to the man gala looking basic i mean <laughs> everybody knows you know not emily her, not emily you know everybody's gonna re- remind her of her role in you know the devil wears Prada. absolutely so, yeah. uh we already talked about Halle Bailey but Halle Bailey and that Tina Turner inspo Rodarte pink sequins shake it showing a little thigh showing a little booty looking good now I'm sorry Chloe you're not on my best dress list but I still love you because your sister did her thing <laughs> she showed up and showed out for the guys Simu Liu I hope I got that right and Fendi, that white jacket mm-hmm. and shirt with the black detail. A star. I never got a chance I to talk about it. that. Um, so small caveat, we talked about this offline, but we didn't get a chance to say it on the pod. So we went to see Shane Chi at theaters, and it was our first in the theater movie since the pandemic. Mind you, we went during the weekday, first showing. So literally, I think maybe eight people were there (laughs) and I wore my mask the most of the time that movie was so good it was so good and he is such a star Ashley I heard this funny from you charming he is a a kick-ass badass like he is a star so I am so excited that he's a part of the Marvel Universe I'm so excited that he has this you know blockbuster movie under his belt He's amazing, and I look forward to anything he's he, he's gonna do in the future. I heard that from you and another friend, and I have been very tempted to make my return to theaters as well, just to see and support this film. He was on the View, and his little um, dance move slash karate move was very <laughs> cute. I enjoyed him, but he showed up and showed out at the Met Gala as well. So good you for you, to. sir. And then my honorable, my honorable mentions: Laura, Michaela Cole in that blue Balenciaga jumpsuit. It's almost the face for me. Almost it's in my best face. dress. The fit was beautiful. She looked impeccable. Um, Her cheekbones is such yeah, a legend. Yeah. I just like people have made direct correlations with her face in like ancient African statues. Oh, <laughs> like, like cheekbones profile. She was gorgeous. Was it uh, Kiki Lane and Oscar De La Renta? I loved the dress. It was not on my best dress list, but again, honorable mention. Storm Reed in the full makeover. I remember when I saw her hit the carpet. I said, "Hold, hold on, hold on." Mm-hmm. Storm Reed with the short blonde hair, and just from the Did head to toe, night. from Did the head to night. toe makeover. She's definitely an honorable mention for me. Well, my my lists actually aren't as elaborate as yours, but we also have some overlap. But that's fine. So my favorites, these two, okay are going neck for neck for my favorite look of the night. The first one I'm not ashamed to admit, Hallie. Her skin was moisturized and that pink, the way it just complimented her, she just looked, and I love a high pony, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Absolutely. The second one, I I hate to admit that I loved it so much because uh, Kendall, Kendall Jenner wore it. Kendall Jenner was in Givenchy. She mm. looked amazing. All right, Normani. Come on. 
First of all, yes, Iman gave me what I was looking for because when it comes to the Met, I want to be wild. I, I want to be entertained to quote the queen from Bridgerton, okay? <laughs> um, and when she showed up in like that headpiece, it was breathtaking. Showstopper. So the uh, designer, Harris Reed, and like, first of all, the way she she's always been a regal presence. I mean, i.e. remember the times with Michael Jackson, right? The way Mon showed up was so regal. And it was like, this is how you show up as a supermodel in your 60s, okay? And and just, it, it, the look is just ageless in the sense of like, queen, queen of the night. I was, I literally, I was like, oh, Whoa. yeah she, it was definitely a moment david was clapping from the great beyond look at my boo oh, look at yeah. my boo thing still shutting yeah. her down still shutting the carpet down all right ashley so my favorite dressed male was Lil nas x because he looked amazing he made three outfit changes yes he did okay? yes he did and that gold looked amazing. I loved his hair. I loved the gold accent in his um, eye makeup. I just loved all of it because the thing I love about Little Nas X is he's all over the place and it seemed to work, you know? <laughs> his body is snatched. It is. It is. The booty was popping and he made sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm going to go into my surprises. So these are looks that I absolutely love that I was not ready for in terms of the person who wore them. Venus being yeah. one, because mm -hmm. Venus, I don't think I've ever seen her at the map before. Serena's always there, but I, I, as much as I love Serena, I do not love her fashion. I do not. It, it just never works for me. Even, yeah, it just never works. But like I said, Venus looked amazing in that red. And girl, Allison Felix was phenomenal. She wore yes. this white, it looks like she was a bird or something. Like, I don't know, but I was here for it. That's um, why she made my best dress. I could not deny it. I was just like, whoa. Yeah, she wore thin, a Fendi. Way to go, way to go. Way to make a, a, a moment at your first match. Because that was one thing that was, that was one thing I noticed. There were a lot more athletes at this one and a lot of young people. So my close calls, Ashley, still positive because we haven't done the, the negative yet. <laughs> Emily Blunt, she's a close call for me because I love the bottom of her dress. I did not enjoy the white part of it. Mm, okay. um, Gabrielle Union, I loved her dress, mm. but I hated her hair. I hated her hair. And I didn't I, love I either. Really, Sorry. I, did, I typically don't enjoy her hair though. So that's neither the point. But that dress I appreciate. It looked like it looked like abstract art. And I love that. And another close call was Lapita Nyongo. So she wore denim, which is very American. Um, the fit was great. The dress just didn't wow me. And her hair was an ode to something that was um of the African-American persuasion. I can't remember right now. So I appreciated what she was trying to do with it, but it wasn't my, it, it was a close call for me. All right, so we can talk about our disappointments, Ashley, go ahead. Okay, Rihanna, Jesus, it pains me to put you on my disappointments list. This, you know, I love uh, your Met Gala moments, but that Balenciaga Couture, black uh, roly-poly look, was not it. Um, it was not it. And I'm not I'm even gonna, I was going to say, I'm not Rocky. even going to mention ASAP's <laughs> attire. He should never have even shown up in his grandmother's um, blanket, whatever we want to say. It was ridiculous. It's not, that's not, see, sometimes I, that's why I have said, even when we did Emily in Paris, and I'm not a high fashion person because some people wear things that I think is just completely atrocious and people will call it fashion. If that's fashion, then I don't I don't know nothing about it because it was horrible to me. Wait, wait, wait. But the big reveal when he when he took off the quilt and gave us nothing in addition to the quilt, I was just like, 
was I supposed to be wild by this? Like, now, granted, I never like his outfits. I think he seems like yeah. he put, tries to push the boundaries of men's fashion, which is great, but I don't usually like his attire. But Rihanna broke my heart. Um, Rihanna, Absolutely. I was waiting for. I was anticipating for the- And she showed up moment. late. Yeah. And that's she what did she not showed make, up as. He did not make the vote red carpet, which I was very disappointed about. Um, and then my other one that hurt me as well was Kim Kardashian, also in Balenciaga. I don't know why we're to this moment now where you're covering up your entire body from head to toe in black. It's First it was the Kanye. leather. Now it's like, this spandex material. I don't know what's happening. It's but a I, t-shirt. I absolutely hated it. And then I saw the Batwoman look for the Met Gala after party or whatever. And I'm like, this is no better. You look like you're, it's a Halloween costume. You know yeah. what I mean? I don't feel like this is fashionable. And Kim Kardashian last year wowed me with that wet kind of look that mm-hmm. she couldn't even pee in. Like, I just felt like she went so beyond my imagination last year and just completely let me down this year. So I wasn't I here she's for okay. it. You know, she's going through the words. That's, that's, that's or is a lot. She, or is she? I don't know what's happening in their life. And at this point, I'm not too concerned. Um, Taraji also disappointed me. And that Moschino. Oh, yeah. It just looked oh, like yeah. it didn't fit well. I didn't really care for the hair comp outfit combo. And usually Taraji mm-hmm. is on my best dress. And then my last disappointment was Dan Levy. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, we love us of Dan Levy on this podcast. He comes correct most of the time. Yeah, it's it was a what, it was a WTF. The designer yeah. was uh, Loive, and I know it was a statement, but it was not a fashionable one whatsoever, in my opinion. And then obviously, no Zendaya. What is a red carpet without my girl Zendaya? Yeah, yeah. So okay, my disappointments. <laughs> That's not so heavy, but Meg B. Stallion. Are we going to prom? Exactly. Or met freaking gala. Exactly. Okay. Because <laughs> sis, like <laughs> my sister said it best. She was like, you know, these rap girls, they only seem like they know how to get naked, but don't know how to get dressed. <laughs> Good point. Because sweetie was underwhelming for me too. I was like, this is the same dress I've seen you in so many times. Exactly. Didn't you just wear this to an award show? Like, yes. Regina King actually was a disappointment for me. I did Aww. not enjoy. Mm-mm. I loved it. And you know, her her stylist, I actually went to school with one of them. So, you know, I always support Way and Micah, but not it for me. Sierra, I understand what she was doing, but I was not thrilled. I mean, no. again, that's no. her husband, her baby daddy, but <laughs> that green... Uh, no and yes what's more american than football right it's still a no j-lo you know my top five is always usually j-lo rihanna zendaya and i'm not i'm gonna reveal the other two in a minute but j-lo showing up in ralph lauren was a no for me it's like what are we doing where's the horse like you're wearing (laughs) six inch heels with this no no thank you the pony was hot though but it's a no for me other disappointments no shows from zendaya beyonce and my girl blake lively they have made the mat for me you know for many many years along with rihanna rihanna decided to show up but she did not care she's like i'm a billionaire now i don't (laughs) need to prove nothing to none of y'all okay and uh that's where you are. I, and I also was not in love with Simone Biles' dress. But no, I wasn't either. either. Here or there. She could barely walk. She's a tiny girl, too. That was a lot of fav- <laughs> <laughs> fabric. <laughs> fabric. Absolutely. All right, Ashley. Well, thank you for going through your list. I hope you all enjoyed the Met Gala as much as we did. There were some people who did not enjoy it, Ashley, because two criticisms really quick before we go into our fall preview there weren't enough American designers. We had a lot of Valentino, Givon G, a lot of Prada. But, I mean, we had a few Michael Kors, a few Ralph Lauren's, but where were they? And where were the Black designers? 
Yeah, besides um, Sergio Hudson, right? But there was the moment um, that they talked about on Vogue where, um, what's his name? He is a racer, Black guy who- Hamilton. Yes, he wanted to highlight certain Black black male designers. I don't know if it's just Black male or Black designers yes. in, inside. So, you know, we don't know everything that goes on inside the Met Gala. So maybe there was more that they talked about in terms of American designers inside. But I do remember them it saying that on the red carpet. Um, it still wasn't enough considering we this is considering the, first the after it's the first met gala after the 2020 racial reckoning of it all too you know what i mean mm-hmm. it's like where where's the money where you put your mouth is you know what i mean yeah, like I, I get it i'm not saying that it's not justified i was just for those mm-hmm. who weren't aware and may not have watched the coverage that there was some additional mm-hmm. things that went on with the highlighting of black designers and american designers as a whole Yes, thank you, Ashley. So we're doing something special this week. It is the most wonderful time of the year for someone like myself and Ashley. It's the fall, which means new television shows and new movies, okay? This is where the good stuff usually comes out, right? Um, The prestigious movies and really good television. So Ashley, Please highlight the TV shows you're looking forward to this this fall. For my highlights of fall, I just wanted to, first of all, give a shout out to the final seasons of Insecure, Blackish, and This Is Us. Some of my faves. Insecure is wrapping up its fifth and final season on HBO, dropping October 24th. Blackish, its eighth and final season on ABC, dropping in 2022. And This Is Us, its sixth and final season on NBC in 2022 some upcoming television I'm looking forward to. New shows are kind of people on Fox. This is a Lee Daniels production set in Oak Bluffs. The wealthy Black area on Martha's Vineyard. Our girl Sunny Halston wrote about in her book Summer on the Bluffs, which was one of my uh, hidden gems a couple weeks ago. Yaya DaCosta stars along with Morris Chestnut. It premieres Tuesday, September 21st at 9 p.m. Queens on ABC starring Brandy, Eve, Naturi Naughton, and Nadine Velasquez as a group of 40-something women getting their 90s girl group back together after falling out due to relationship issues and other drama. That premieres Tuesday, October 19th at 10 p.m. And then Delora, I'm looking forward to season two of The Morning Show dropping on Apple TV+. Plus. That is going to be Friday, September 17th. So this coming Friday starring Jen Aniston, Reese Witherspoon, Steve Carell. And then you is fine. Finally coming back to Netflix starring Penn Badgley returning for season three on October 15th and I'm just wondering what the hell he and love are going to do now that they have a freaking baby so Mm -hmm. those are my kind of fall preview highlights what about you all right so we have a lot of the same so I'm definitely looking forward to Queens and I'm definitely looking forward to our kind of people because I love bougie black people okay (laughs) um so I'm gonna go ahead and highlight some shows that you didn't mention so Hawkeye he's not my favorite Avenger however these original you know Marvel Studios slash Disney plus shows have been really good so I'm excited because it's a Christmas theme. It's coming out November 24th on Disney Plus. Basically, it's a uh, event set after Avengers Endgame, and it just follows Hawkeye as he tries to uh, fight crime in New York during the holidays. And so, um, another unexpected uh, person I enjoyed. Her name is uh, Haley Stanfield. Uh, from the Met Gala, she was unrecognizable. I was like, oh, okay. Yes, she was with the blonde wig and such. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah. And I love the dress too. So that's something I'm looking forward to. I am also looking forward to Witcher season two. (laughs) Love Henry Cavill. Yeah, I can't go wrong with that. The other show being from a marriage. Now, this looks kind of boring, I'm not going to lie, but the way that Oscar Isaac and Jessica Chastain been promoting this, <laughs> I'm like, I need to see this chemistry in a longer format because oh, no. um, the big to-do was last week during one of the film festivals, 
he appeared to have been giving her intense stares and nuzzling her armpit so <laughs> or sniffing or what have you i didn't know they had known each other since college though so i was like ah, i didn't know that either okay y'all yeah. have a long-standing relationship maybe it's not as weird as everybody made it seem <laughs> i know i know because it's it was teetering on you know the is this you know are y'all having an open affair you know is this a brad pitt angelina jolie situation <laughs> yeah yeah um but basically it's a modern telling of of a marriage that's falling apart <laughs> so i don't know how exciting it's gonna be but there is some intense chemistry there that i'm actually quite looking forward to and Grey's anatomy ashley season 18 i'm ride or die okay and <laughs> clearly i'm i'm riding until the wheels fall off i don't know when they're gonna end it but i'm gonna be there that's all i know uh kate welsh is coming back as well as abigail spencer which should be very interesting the fact that they're bringing people back <laughs> my boo they is gone so though. many people my they boo is gone so many people and and you know the fact that they have to bring people back even from the dead i'm like this if this isn't a prime time soap opera i don't know <laughs> what is oh and and then my final and i know i only said so many but i i have this wonderful list in front of me with uh buzzfeed with 55 television shows the Wonder Years is having a reboot with an all black family. It's going to be narr narrated by the wonderful Don Cheadle. Um, it's also starring Dulé Hill. I'm just looking forward to seeing chocolate people on screen uh, in the 19, what, 60s, late 60s, 70s time yeah. frame. Fred so, Savage is attached. He's going to be directing. It's going to drop on ABC. So, yes, definitely yes, something yes. to check out. So that's that's it for fall preview. Thank you so much, Ashley, uh, for your picks. I'm sure we're gonna be micro dosing, if not recapping some of these shows once they hit the air. Absolutely. So, do you have anything else, Ashley? That's it, guys. We will be back with episode 50. Stay tuned. See ya.